Good morning, 631. Thought I'd check in. Uh, I think it's been uh, been a week or so since I've uh, done a little YouTube video, but I um, wanted to uh, check in, see how everybody's doing. I um, also wanted to uh, apologize for any Flames fans and say sorry for any Flames fans that are out there. Um, you know, better luck next year, maybe. But uh, and I wanted to flaunt my oiler pillow there. Uh, big game tomorrow against Colorado, so that'll be pretty exciting. Um, I wanted to comment on um, the social determinants of health. Everybody uh, chimed in on whether you thought that the list was exhaustive or not, and um, I thought this was pretty interesting. And, and it just goes to show, you know, reading through your posts, If I know a lot of people wonder, you know, oh, am I writing the right thing? Am I on the right track? And... Um, a lot of these things, there's really no right or wrong answer. I mean, it, it's what you think, and then you provide um, some type, some type of uh, background or rationale uh, to support that. And and every and everybody has done that in in this forum here on on providing, um, you know, maybe some other factors that uh, or some other determinants that you think um, should be included in the in the social determinants of health. Um, but I just wanted to summarize a, a few of them. I mean, it's interesting because some people came up with similar, uh, similar ideas. Um, uh, and I, I, there was really, I kind of grouped them. There's really only five kind of, kind of overarching ideas or determinants that, that we thought that perhaps could, could be added. Um, so I, I think with that said, I mean, because there is only kind of maybe five, um, kind of newer ideas. I think the um, the current list of social determinants is is pretty exhaustive. But um, these ideas that you guys came up with are ones that um, we've started to see. I guess primarily, I don't know. I'm gonna obviously not you know COVID notwithstanding, um, these things have come up maybe in the past decade. So things like racism. Um, uh, sexuality, LGBTQ, 2S+, um, things like that. So, you know, perhaps the current list of, of determinants is a little bit outdated and it, and it should be should be updated to reflect a few of these things. But I just wanted to point out um, kind of what, what some people said. I know you've, you maybe you've gone through and read them all, but um, I just had a few thoughts on, on some of them. Um, I'll start with Christine. She mentioned uh, health literacy. Uh, we've published some data uh, showing health literacy is related to physical activity behavior and um, the amount of walking steps that people get and um, I know Christine you're, you're probably more you're talking more about um, you know pandemic related health literacy vaccinations uh, larger issues like that as opposed to just physical activity but um, but indeed I think the COVID pandemic has certainly brought that to light um, you know we've seen um, I can't speak for everybody, but, you know, you, you, you see families kind of being torn apart or um, people who you once thought were sensible, common sense people um, start having these wild and wacky ideas about about vaccinations and COVID con conspiracies and stuff like that. And and you think like, you know, you know, do you know how to access evidence and do you know how to read the evidence? And um it reminds me of a good post that was going around at Christmas and I posted it in response, I think to Christine's post and um, it was just a meme and it says, um, Santa's been reading your posts and uh, you're all getting science textbooks for Christmas. And I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, Chris mentioned um, the recognition of marginalized groups. And I think, you know, in the last few years uh, that has certainly come to the forefront. So, you know, we now have pretty conclusive evidence that people who are racial, racialized, uh, minorities, people who are uh, individuals of color, uh, they have poor health outcomes um, and they have poor access to, to health services. And um, so that should certainly, Chris mentions that that should certainly be a factor that we should be um, considering. Uh, uh, Craig and Jen had similar, uh, similar ideas. They mentioned mental health and addictions, I kind of think the two go go hand in hand. And, um, you know, when 
when these determinants of health were first being put together, there was no such thing as an opioid crisis or a fentanyl crisis. Um, there was no such thing as safe injection sites. I, I don't think so. Um, so these are all things, these are all um, kind of the number one health priorities that um, our country, or I guess we're facing. And um, so we, you know, that that's Craig and Jen feel that that should be something that should be um, one of the key determinants of health. And I tend to agree with that. Um, Andre, I, I hope I'm saying that name, Andre or Andre, I'm going to say Andre, I think. And um, she mentioned, this is, this is really interesting, social media and cell phones. And along those lines, Daphne and Amelia mentioned digital health literacy and digital inclusion. Um, I'll start with the social media cell phones. I think that's a fascinating, um, fascinating idea. You know, we, we all get most of our information off of our cell phone or our iPad. And it, and unfortunately, most of it is coming from social media. Now, us in this group are all, um, I'm not a health professional, most of you are. Um, so you know where to go to access the reliable information. Me as a scientist or a researcher, I know where to go to access that information. So, um, you know, I mean, certainly things like PubMed and Medline can be accessed on a cell phone. But um, in general, people are getting their information from Facebook. They're getting it from Instagram. They're getting it from their favorite website, which uh, could be Fox News, or it could be the very, very uh, left. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It could be the, the news source that comes from the very, very left of the political spectrum. Um, and they're not getting a very balanced approach. Um, Daphne and Amelia, Amelia, like I mentioned, they, they said digital health literacy and digital inclusion. Very interesting, um, you know, a lot of people, older adults, uh, might not be fluent um, with digital devices and how to access information through that. And digital inclusion, some people simply might not have those types of devices. Um, and I think maybe the broader, uh, the broader idea there is, uh, has to do with access to, you know, uh, broadband internet um, and things like that. So, uh, you know, so having, uh, they mentioned having equitable access to information. Um, Genevieve mentions racism and the importance of cultural safety and the um, uh, the example of, that comes to mind for me is looking at um, the Asian population through throughout the COVID pandemic and and the stress and kind of the mental health challenges that they must be facing you know just having this new fear and reading about um, you know, unprovoked attacks on the street and um, Asian businesses being um, defaced uh, by graffiti and, and, and things like that. Um, and I think it's not only, of course, you know, Asians, the Asian um, issues that we're seeing now are, um, I guess it's not just in Canada, it's all over North America, but uh, but other groups have been experiencing that for, for decades. I'm thinking, you know, you, you think of um, Jewish uh, synagogues and Muslim mosques, and, you know, it seems like every year, even in Canada, there's, there's um, incidences where um, their feeling, their safety is, uh, is threatened. And, um, yeah, and that all has health consequences. That all has major health consequences. Uh, Jennifer mentioned trauma. I think this was uh, really important. Um, and I'm going to take it a step further and I'll say intergenerational trauma. And I mean, and this is something that is really only come to the forefront in the last couple of years. Um, you know, especially with our First Nations and Indigenous populations, um, we're finding now that uh, the health issues that uh, they are facing um, are largely attributed to intergenerational trauma, trauma that is passed down from generation to gen generation. And um, I think that, especially in Canada, especially what we're finding now with, um, uh, you know, the, the, the unmarked grave sites that, are, that seem to be popping up on a weekly basis. And, um, you know, again, that, that all feeds into health consequences. And, um, yeah, so trauma and intergenerational trauma, I think, are incredibly critical. Um, just a few more. Uh, Christina mentioned health inequities. Um, and I'm going to kind of quote what she said here, because um, she took it from a, a reference, uh, Paramore, from 2001. 
Um, and it just, it says, it said it a lot better than I could ever say it. So um, Christina mentions things like adverse working conditions, growing economic disparities, and this is interesting, anti-democratic political processes and institutions. Um, these determinants of health have interlinked with class, ethnicity, gender, education level, and other factors during the pandemic to exacerbate existing social vulnerabilities in society. And you only have to look at the COVID pandemic to see how that impacted um, people who are working on um, not lower end frontline jobs. I don't know what the word is, but just things like your grocery store clerks, your, your workers working in Tim Hortons and, um, you know, they're, it's essentially minimum wage and they weren't getting the time off that they needed and they weren't getting paid time off until the government kind of mandated, you know, I don't know if it was three or seven days of, um, you know, paid time off that they could have um, if they were if they were isolating or something like that. Um, and then, of course, you know, uh, Christina mentions gender and uh, there was clear research showing that you know, women were, women were more ad adversely affected, especially when it comes to employment conditions um, during the COVID pandemic. Um, you know, and then of course, education levels and, uh, and different things like that. So super important um, health inequities is, a, is I think uh, is a key, I agree with Christina, is a key social determinant of health. And again, we just have to look at the COVID pandemic to, um, to see that just so clear. It's not even um, it's not even a may or a maybe, it's, it's crystal clear. Uh, another in interesting factor was mentioned by Maria, um, sexuality. And sexuality, she mentions, is strongly linked to health status. In particular, you know, our LGBTQ 2S plus population, uh, the research is quite clear there as well, that they often face discrimination when they're trying to access healthcare services. Um, I'm naive to it. I like to think that would be getting better just because these issues are more front and center and things are being done about it. Um, but I don't know. Um, and the last one I'll mention, and I think I've covered everybody, uh, and this was really interesting and kind of takes me back to when I was doing my PhD, there was a lot of focus on um, like anorexia nervosa was a big, um, what was something that was kind of popular in the research as well as what we called obligatory exercise behavior. So people that exercise too much. So Kelsey calls them obsessive healthy behaviors um, and the term she gives. And this is, I'm, like I said, I learned so much from you guys. Um, she mentions orthorexia nervosa, which is an obsess obsession with healthy living. And, um, and I'll take that a step further. I think this could be tied into mental health and addictions. I think there's a strong linkages, linkage there. But, you know, Kelsey mentions things like, especially during the COVID pandemic, uh, excessive hand washing, uh, clean eating um, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, again, none of these are wrong. Um, you all provided really interesting points. You provided some information to kind of justify why you think that that should be considered as one of a, you know, one of the key determinants, social determinants of health. Um, I learned a heck of a lot. Um, I, just, I, I just wanted to show my face again, touch base with you guys. And I thought this would be a great idea to just kind of summarize everything that um, you guys have been saying. I really enjoyed this um, aspect of the week. Um, hey, I'm look. it's 14 minutes now, 14 minutes, probably 12 minutes more than you want to see and listen to me. So I'll sign off. Thanks everybody for posting. Thanks for being uh, such active and willing participants in the course. Um, I think I might do another video a little bit later just to kind of provide a bit of a summary of where we're at in terms of the assignments, e-portfolios, and kind of what we're going to be getting into um, in a few days when we get into the next next unit. Thanks, everybody. Happy Monday. Hope everybody, um, hope your week's gotten off to a good start. Cheers.